Welcome back, friends, with more of The Legend of Vox Machina. This is Season 3, Episode 7. Last time, we got to witness Chateau Short Halls. That was awesome. I wish I had that ability to just pop into this magical home away from home at any time. But then Scanlan went to see his daughter, and everyone else went back to Whitestone, only to find it set ablaze by Thordak's children. And it was freaking Ripley who gave Thordak that intel. Percy is understandably pissed, and we're going after her. Before we get started, though, real quick update. I underestimated how much stuff is in October, and I've been doing like 9 or 10 videos a week, and it's a little too much. Uh, I'm going to burn out if I don't slow down, so we're going to fo go forward with just one episode a week with the show. I'll likely just do one current show at a time in the future, which means there will be times I won't be watching things as soon as they drop, but it'll be better for my health and my sleep schedule. But alright, P.O. Box address is in the description. Full reactions on Patreon. Leave a like and let's get started. Is this the soft glow of a flashback? Not sure what you hope to accomplish, Anna. <laughs> I've tried. Ripley's flashback. Oh, that so? Your gifts will change the world, Anna. Oh, you, so you to use them. The mines. They're seizing them. This is why she wants to help everyday people defend themselves. We would have given you the mines. Didn't need to blow us up. Oh my god. He's gone. I think there's a reality where she could have been an ally. Ugh. How many souls? Over 500 dead. Oh, 800 Jesus. wounded. The residuum. Whitestone's entire supply. Stolen. Oh. She used the attack to cover while she raided our reserves. Ripley has a mind for machines, not magic. Why would she need residuum? Magic machines. I could check with my old contacts in the clasp. If anyone knows how to catch a snake, it's a guild of thieves. No need. I've got her. <laughs> you Obsidian do. Obsidian thermite. This can only be found in one place. Ah. Oh. The Isle of Glintshaw. She didn't just leave this behind. It was intentional. Uh huh. An invitation. Clearly. But we'll be going anyway. I see nothing wrong with that plan. Trap's not a trap if you know no, it's a trap. Are you sure you can? Contain yourself. You said I'm a changed man. Let's hope you're right. <laughs> we'll need it first night then. Where is Scanlan? Hopefully, having better luck than we are. Uh. <laughs> Too late. Too late. There comes a time when you realize what's important to you. You want to tell them? I want us to be honest with ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. But, but telling them will change things. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them acting like we don't know. How dumb do they think we are? Uh. They desecrated every room in Scanlan's chateau. I heard them on the billiard table, just like pounding. We it out. get oh. it. Road trip. <laughs> <laughs> Aw. Would you like my coat? <laughs> he says freezing. But I believe we've arrived. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> A whole day with no ale. I'm starving. Starving. Sorry, I'm sure there's a tavern just around the next ancient ruined bend. Well, ancient ruin your bend. You all hang tight. <laughs> what if it changed things for the better? What? Yeah. You're telling them about us. Scanlan will mock me relentlessly. Keyleth will call me a hypocrite. And my brother. <sighs> oh, I can't even imagine what he'd do to you. Are you sure that's why you're against it? To mm. protect me. But if anyone's out there, we can't see them. If anyone's out there, they can't see us. Oh. I'm gonna reach for a random fruit. Oh, a path. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> why don't you explode your own breakfast? Uh. <laughs> the Dorolo Crest. Something's not right. That was easy. Almost, Almost like it's too easy. Slow your moment. Sorry, I've just always wanted to say that. <laughs> There's a reason I've been pressing you about this. I'm in love with you. Wait, no. Oh. Stepped out of the light. Disarmed. Come on, let's move. Oh. <sighs> it's quiet. Almost, Almost too. Almost too quiet. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure anyone on you and Percy scouted it. Oh, Pike. Vex, 
Oh, uh, uh, distracted. No, there were some guards. Oh, jeez. Whoa. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, somebody put a mask? Oh, not a great time to have them be unemotionally unstable. Who did this to you? You did, Exalia. What? Your love. It kills. No, it doesn't. Welcome to the world of tomorrow. Uh. Oh. Hello, Percival. So this is what you've been up to, apart from decimating my home. I did you a favor. You a always favor? despised your noble duties. How dare oh, you! Wow. And once my delirium gas tears through the minds of your friends, you'll be free of all obligation. I had to improvise when I realized the plate was a fake. Uh -huh. The only issue is this power surge. Once an hour. <laughs> Look at yourself. Already trying to solve it. Yeah. Why do you fight this, Percy? When we found each other, I didn't resist like you. I welcomed the insight, the clarity, the power. I accepted who I am. I've deluded myself, insisting I've moved on. Uh -huh. Maybe it's time I accept that some scars don't heal. I understand <laughs> all too well. Nope. We both do. Percy! My imperfections don't make me weaker. They make me who I am. <laughs> he was just cheering, figuring out how to wreck everything real quick. Let me have his soul. Fine. Fine? It's time to settle our bargain. Oh boy. They're still fighting their own minds. Let go of me. Let go. It's just a vine. Oh no. Oh, it's a bleeding. The truth is in your blood. Oh, what? She's out of it. Oh, damn. Much better shot than you all. He's been at this longer. So <laughs> easy. <laughs> oh shit! I'm simply finishing what you couldn't. What? What? Oh. Every innocent life would be in our hands. <sighs> I will not be complicit. Oh damn! Oh, Keyleth. Oh, Keyleth. They're all dead. What? It didn't work. Ever lights. Her blood. Her blood. I may need some help, Brog. The guy. A library. A library. <laughs> no pictures. Oh my God, Grog. <laughs> Where's Percy? Take it. And in a shootout. What the heck? That's. Kind of really cool, but terrible. Get her to destroy the entire factory. Black powder. Mm hmm. Not a good spot to roll out. He's getting ideas. You've had the gears are turning. Opportunities to kill me. On the end. Oh, no. One. Has it been an hour? Wait, oh, shit, he got hit. He's seemingly fine. What blocked it? No. Oh. Now revenge is yours. Finish it. Really? I'm done with vengeance, Anna. Your transgressions have ruined many lives beyond mine. What we deserve is justice. I don't understand. So you're gonna lock her up? I can help rid you of Orthax. After time and penance, you could find a better way. Your mind could be a gift to the world. I was saying that earlier. You're serious. 
<sighs> you can't redeem everyone. I guess you should try, but in this situation, she was clearly gonna kill you. And she escapes yet again. He's gone. What the heck? Wait, wait, we- You can revive him though, right? So, Percy's dead? I assume he'll be brought back to life at some point, because otherwise Taliesin would just be sitting there twiddling his thumbs forever, or just not show up. Though I guess in some cases DMs would have a player make a new character, but that's not what this feels like in this moment. And, uh, Percy, there's a line between doing things for revenge and protecting yourself and the people you love. I think I was saying it during the opening credits that it's such a shame about the path Ripley took and that in another life, she could have been a strong ally to Vox Machina. But at this point, Percy... Okay, I, I respect that he wanted to rehabilitate her after everything because he sees himself in her. But if you wanted to do that, at least tie her up first, especially since Orthax was still inside her. Man. And her flashback was really sad, and I could see why she wants to arm everyone so that they can protect themselves, but that vision has become so warped, her only solution to things is violence, and while that's not necessarily her fault, it makes her too dangerous. She already had so many guns ready, thankfully the factory was destroyed, cause damn. And yeah, she's so single-minded about her path that she becomes like the very people who killed her family, focused only on her goal, not caring who gets hurt in the process. And I get Percy's instinct to want her on their side. If her village wasn't slaughtered, she probably would have been. And yeah, trying to rehabilitate someone is great, but you have to weigh that against the danger they pose to everybody else. She wound up killing Percy. Who knows how many other people she'll kill because Percy tried to reason with her instead of finishing her off. I guess my issue isn't really with him trying to rehabilitate her. It's more that he didn't ensure his own safety first and then underestimated Ripley's preparedness and resourcefulness. Man... But yeah, earlier in the episode, Percy was pushing things with Vex because he's in love with her. I liked what they did from a cinematic point of view when he revealed his love for her. The angle of the sunlight changes and lights up Vex's face. She's happy that he feels that way about her. And then she steps out of the sunlight because she feels like she's cursed or whatever. Really sad. Also, it's kind of super funny that they think the rest of the group doesn't know that they're together. They're so obvious about it that even Thordak probably somehow knows. But yeah, Vex never got a chance to express her love to him either, even though I know she feels it. She just feels like her love will doom him. Maybe his death will grant her clarity and they'll understand that, like, hey, we're in a dangerous profession and we could die at any moment. And it doesn't have anything to do with curses or fate or bad luck or whatever. So let's just enjoy what we have as long as we can have it. I'm also curious, though, how many of our characters have died so far? Was Keyleth close to dying with the magic nullifying orb thing? I remember Vex dying for sure, and now Percy. I feel like we're in danger of possibly shrugging off death and becoming overconfident if we're able to just constantly revive our characters. Death really has no jurisdiction here. Though telling someone you love them in the middle of a very dangerous mission probably isn't the right move. I don't think Vex steps on that tripwire if she isn't so flustered and distracted. You saw the fear in Vex's eyes when he saw that trap go off. I'm guessing he was afraid it was a trap that would instantly kill her again, but no, it's hallucinogenic gas. But yeah, while everybody sees some really horrible stuff, I think Pike's vision was actually real, because what Xerxes says was true, her blood having the power to heal her friends, that's certainly something for sure. Uh, technically counts as blood magic, though that typically has a greater association with like evil mages and stuff. Grog's vision of a library with books with no pictures, poor guy. Do we know if he can read? I forget if he can. But yeah, Percy's dead. I immediately assume that he's going to be okay, but one of these days, a death is actually going to stick and I'm going to be shocked out of my mind. Is it going to be this time? Who knows? Uh, and like I said at the start of the video, I'm going to move to one episode a week because I'm overworking myself at the moment, which means I'll probably also miss the start of Arcane, but it's fine. I'll catch up afterwards. Gotta prioritize my health and all that. Full reactions on Patreon, and I'll see you guys next week with more. Bye, friends.